If you're buying a gravel bike, one choice you're likely to be faced with is whether or not you go for a double chainring or a single chainring option, either two by or one by. Now, given that Shimano have just launched their first ever one by drop bar specific option as part of their new GRX range, we thought it was high time to try and clarify just what the relative advantages of each system are, and then try and work out which one might be better suited for the type of riding that you wanna do. First up, a quick explainer, just in case you need the whole one by or two by thing clarified. Now, very simply, one by or two by refers to the number of chain rings that you have on your bike, either one or two. Now, it sounds simple, and it is, but there are one or two things that you need to know. In order to run a single chain ring setup, you are gonna need a special chain ring. One that's designed to stop the chain from coming off, which would otherwise be a problem if you were to just remove your front derailleur. Now, the way manufacturers achieve this does vary, but very generally, this type of chain ring is called a narrow wide chain ring. And that refers to the alternating width of the teeth on the ring. And then they correspondingly fit much more precisely between the narrow and wide links on the chain. And it's really, really effective. So much so that although this bike does have a chain catcher, I would not bother with one. And also, you could only ever run this type of chainring one by because you wouldn't be able to shift off it. In addition to that specific chainring, you're also going to want a rear derailleur with a clutch type mechanism on there. Now, these clever little gizmos effectively add resistance to the derailleur arm in a forward moving direction. So that basically stops the chain from bouncing around and potentially bouncing off. A byproduct of this is that it also makes the bike so much quieter on bumpy terrain because the chain is much less likely to be slapping around against the frame. And so effective is it that it's also on the two by group set option as well. Now, a two by setup, I think for a lot of us might sound simpler, but then I think that's probably because it's what we're used to. Front derailleurs have been on road bikes now for 70 years, but in actual fact, it is gonna be more complicated in that you have a front derailleur, you have an additional shifter, you also have an extra cable to connect the two, plus you have an extra chain ring, of course. Now, once you know how, a front derailleur is super easy to set up and works perfectly. But a lot of people do seem willing to put up with poorly adjusted ones that mean that they might not shift as well as they should, or you just get a bit of derailleur rub on your chain making it a little bit noisy. Let's not dwell on that though, because as I said, when a front derailleur is set up somewhere close to correct, it works perfectly. So what are the advantages then of a two by setup? Well, predominantly, it comes down to gear ratios. You have double the number of gears on a two by setup compared to a one by setup, of course. Although, interestingly, or perhaps not, I'll let you decide, you actually don't get double the number of gear ratios. And that's because there's a little bit of overlap between the two chain rings. You have a wide range of gear ratios. In fact, wider than ever on this GRX 810 chain set because for the first time, Shimano have created a 17 tooth gap between the rings. So this is 4831. Perhaps most importantly though, you get smaller jumps between the gears on a two by setup generally. And that's because you can run a closer ratio cassette at the back. So in this case, I've got an 11 to 34. And it's good because at faster speed, so perhaps tarmac or smoother gravel, you can be more comfortable and potentially even more efficient because you're more likely to find a gear that suits your optimal cadence for that particular moment. But then you don't need to worry about being stuck without smaller gears because of course you have that tiny little chain ring on the front, in this case a 31, which is going to be well suited for the much slower speeds associated with riding off-road. Ultimately, you can safely say that given this tech has been refined over the last 70 years, it's pretty tried and tested. A two by setup works and it works really well. 
What about one by then? What are its advantages? Why get rid of half of your gears? Well, that is a good question because for a lot of us, it may well be slightly counterintuitive. I'm gonna start with a personal one, but I really like the aesthetics. And that's really important, actually. I think if we all admit to ourselves, deep down, at least part of the reason we've chosen the bikes that we have in the past is because we like the look of them. And so don't underestimate the importance of that. And I'm not just referring to the view of the bike in profile either when I'm taking a bike vault photo. What I actually mean is when riding it and you look down at your legs pedaling and it just looks so clean. I love it. And you might love it too but then you might not. It's an entirely personal choice. Now, in terms of the performance advantages, first up, you will get rid of a little bit of weight, of course, because you're removing your front derailleur and one of the chain rings. It's not a massive amount to get excited about, perhaps 250 grams if you factor in the cable that you can get rid of as well. One of the most significant advantages, and one not shared with road bikes actually, is that if you remove the front derailleur, you can fit wider tires. Even with GRX, where the front derailleur and the chain set have actually been spaced out slightly, there is still an official restriction of 42 millimeters on the width of your tires. When you remove that, a frame manufacturer can then fit much wider tires in there. Now, at this point, a lot of you have mentioned already that if your chain stays are long enough, you can still fit in really wide tires and a front derailleur as well. But here's the thing, a shorter chainstay bike does tend to feel a lot livelier and more responsive, even with wider tires. And so that's why it's quite an important consideration. Removing front derailleurs has completely liberated mountain bike designers. And the same is kind of true with gravel as well, even if it's not quite so significant. Finally, you can use your left shifter now to do other things, like activate a dropper post. Seriously, yes. I mean, I do actually have a dropper post on my mountain bike now, and I think it's great. But personally, I can't see the need for one on a drop bar bike. But then that's what I said about mountain bikes, and now I wouldn't be without one. So, uh, so yeah, come back to me in four years time, and I'll probably have one. You might not be quite so slow on the uptake as me though. Okay, let's talk gear ratios again. How does it work if you remove half of your gears? Well, in the first instance, you'll want a much larger ratioed cassette at the back. So in this case, I've got an 11 to 42 mountain bike cassette on there. With GRX, you'll need a specific rear derailleur in order to accommodate such a wide cassette on there. For cyclocross, it wouldn't be quite so important, but for gravel, you definitely want those easy, easy gears just in case the terrain demands it. Because getting off and running with your bike isn't really that much fun outside of a cross race. And actually, if we're honest, it's not that much fun in a cross race either. An 11 to 42 cassette like this one with a 42 chain ring will mean that you'd run out of gears at about 60K an hour, as opposed to 70 kilometers an hour with a 48 toothpick ring. Now, that actually doesn't sound too important to me. I said it before, but I do tend to stop pedaling these days at about 60K an hour. However, I do know that a lot of people worry about that. At the other end of the spectrum, a 31-34 combo would allow you to stay on the bike at about three to five kilometers an hour, as opposed to five to seven kilometers an hour for a 42-42. In terms of the jumps between the gear ratios, on road, they can feel quite significant, particularly if you're riding in a group and you're therefore not dictating the pace. But worth remembering the point that we touched on earlier, which is that with a 22-speed two-by setup, you actually only have apparently around 14 distinct gear ratios. So with an 11 speed one by setup, you're only missing three, even if it might sometimes feel like it's more than that. When riding off-road though, and speeds are generally lower, you'll find that those larger jumps between the gears are actually something to be welcomed. It's a positive thing because otherwise you do spend your life changing gear. 
And that's something that I found out when I was 16. And I spent ages saving up for a close ratio cassette for my mountain bike because I thought it was going to make me faster. When in reality, all I did was spend every race changing gear constantly because I could never find the right one. It's a true story that. It's not a good one, but it is true. So if those are the advantages of each, how do you know which one to choose? Well, if you want a responsive, lively gravel bike with really wide tires, you're gonna need one by on there anyway. So the choice might be taken away from you. Then if you like the idea of the simplicity, slight reduction in weight, and then potentially also a little bit of extra robustness, one by definitely has the edge over two by. Then of course, there's the important question of aesthetics, which is entirely personal, but two by ain't dead yet. Far from it, in fact. It's tried, it's tested, it's more refined than ever, and as long as your tire choice and frame choice doesn't preclude it, it is a fantastic option. I think a lot of people will still be swayed by those smaller jumps between the gears, but still getting that wider spread of ratios overall. Do make sure you let us know what you think, which is your choice or which would be your choice, and let us know why in the comments section down below. Also, give this video a big thumbs up, and if you'd like to watch another one about how to choose your gravel bike, then you can click through to that on screen now.